So Mecca, thank you so much for joining. Uh, Mecca is the CEO of Jacina, uh, the largest commercial real estate company in Europe. Um, and you're joining me today from Paris, right? Yeah, thank you for having me. Definitely. Nice to, nice to see you. You too. Um, so Mecca, I just, I'm curious to know from your perspective, obviously Paris and France has been one of the countries um, hit very early um, by this. How, how has France reacted and how has Jacina in particular reacted to this crisis? Well, um, uh, we, uh, as far as I am concerned, I started to be concerned about this virus when we started to hear from what was going on in Wuhan and China. And, and considering that, you know, I, I have been through uh, the, uh, the Chernobyl, you know, uh, clouds, which at that time in France, people would say that because of the temperature or whatever, the clouds didn't went through the country. And this wasn't true. So I couldn't consider that this is going to stay in Wuhan. And we started to put in place a sort of uh, watch team to observe what was going on in China starting in um, February 27, quite early actually in the process. Wow. And, um, and little by little, listening to what was going on in Italy. Italy was even ahead of us. And make a long story short, uh, when the President of Republic decided, and we put in place a sort of crisis team um, early March, uh, really early March, something like one or two March, uh, considering that this is something which is going to spread and starting to provide our team uh, to say that we have to have the distanciation, you know, um, attitude, and at the type of uh, at the top of that to provide with hydro alcoholic, you know, liquid with uh, all kind of possibility. No masks were available at e e early at that time e uh, also, but we also we started very early to to look at all these issues and try to understand what was going on. So the day the the, the president of Republic Emmanuel Macron said that uh, France is going under lockdown by mid-March, we were ready for that. And from one day to another, all our administrative team started to work from home. We, as an executive team, we spent, we sent a message to all our employees and said, look, this is gonna happen. This is what the instruction we have received from, uh, from the president. And we are now going to absolutely follow that, except for our colleagues we, who are working on sites like you know multi-family you know buildings and then uh, and we put in place all the uh, uh, all the infrastructure and thanks god we have heavily invested heavily invested in it both hardware and software and we were capable to work from home from one day to another and, and i'm now, i'm curious to just just on that one point around around investing in it obviously you know, one of the, the things that the, the speed with which this forced companies to begin working remotely, one of the things I feel like it did is it massively favored companies that had preemptively undertaken measures to be able to work remotely, yeah. largely through the adoption of cloud-based software solutions. Had, has, is that something Justina had been kind of pushing for years? Because usually real estate companies are not are not the most forward, even with regard to their own systems. Absolutely. Well, Brendan, you have visited our headquarters, so you have seen the, the, the quality of the equipment and the investment we have made on the IT side. Well, this was something which I considered uh, three years ago that was absolutely necessary to have the right IT system and have the equal level of IT system for everybody in the organization. And we provided all our employees with mobile phone, et cetera. Did I have in, in mind that we're gonna go through the COVID? Never. Honestly, never could imagine that the crisis will come from that side. Uh, but globally, I consider that one way or another, we needed to equip people the best way possible. And we haven't yet started to have a 
globalized you know, work from home system because I considered that there was one step missing, which we were considering in 2020. And in fact, we are now doing it without having been trained for, which is how to manage behind the screen, how to make sure that you have the right conversation with people, how to manage the relationship and the social relationship you have with your colleagues. When one of them is not feeling good or has something to share or has something, you know, the, uh, the, the, the pictures from vacations or from the kids or from the grandchildren, whatever, those kind of uh, personal and important social, uh, you know, relationship uh, has stopped from one day to another. And yeah. from one day to another, we went all over the world. So we had all the equipment, the high quality of equipment. We have regular meetings. At some point, we are meeting our colleagues through the screen more than before, at least some of them, not everybody. So we don't have the opportunity just to say hi at the restaurant, just yeah. to go and, and uh, have a coffee together at our you first ca cafe. So these are things which we were, I, I was supposed to launch in the second you know, quarter of the year and to start to think, what are the consequences in terms of management? How to make sure that some of our colleagues who are living alone uh, in their apartment, and usually they have a social life, they are in connection with people, but how we, we are assured that they feel good about that, that they are not stressed. And there's a real stress. You're stressed for your life. You're stressed for, for your health, for yours and your dear ones. So you need to have those kind of education and get educated for that. And this is missing. This part is really missing. And I think that this is something we need to absolutely work on once we are capable to come out of our houses. And it's not going to happen from one day to another. You know, one of the things that um, just from my perspective, it's been interesting to experience is that, you know, we kind of went from all working for fifth wall, we went from all working in an office and you see everybody at the office, the you know, 99.9% .9 of my actions, interactions with my employees are at the office. And then occasionally I'm on calls with them yeah. outside yeah. of the office. But there's something obviously far less intimate and more limiting around voice. Um, but it's like suddenly in the last month, I've kind of been thrust into the homes and the workspaces and the living spaces of all of my employees. and it creates this kind of this uh, intimacy where one of the things that we've talked a lot about Mecca is how, how real estate owners and how occupiers need to think about the holistic health of their employees. Yeah. And typically the way I've always framed that is what can we do at the office? And in some ways it's now given me a more complete picture. I feel like I've been mm -hmm. in my colleagues' homes for the last yeah. month and yeah. thinking about, there's so much that goes into building a productive, healthy, integrated workforce. Um, and so in some ways, I think there's lessons there, right, for, for office owners and for occupiers um, about how do you build that environment, not just at, at the office itself, but at home, to enable people to be productive at all times and healthy at all times. And, and this, is, this is a very fair point and very important one, because, our homes, even if we were very well equipped in terms of uh, hardware, I mean, having the latest, you know, new, uh, I, I don't know, uh, Apple, uh, you know, home, uh, um, home laptop, but we were not used to work from home. Right. By, by the way, uh, just for fun, there is something I, I mentioned to my colleagues all the time. And by the way, I moved from one place to another one. Our place, our apartment is not equipped to, for working from home. It's equipped from time to time to read the emails, maybe send a message, whatever, but not for 24 seven working from home. So for the first you know, two weeks, I was seated in a couch in a, a sort of TV room and library we have. And, uh, and, and the couch is so uncomfortable. <laughs> and I was blaming the person who bought it, which is me. Right? right. How did I buy something so uncomfortable for yeah. people to work? So we are not equipped for that. And then we have to consider, if you consider that everybody is going forever to work from home, 
then there are a lot of consequences. For instance, if when you are working from home, your coffee is so hot that you are burning, you know, yourself, your, I, mean, I don't know, with the hot water or whatever. Right. How is it going to be qualified? Is that a work accident? Isn't it? How do we, how are we going as a, as a company, you know, executive to make sure that we have, you have the right equipment at home, you have the right facilities at home. And if an accident happened, why and how the insurance are going to work? Mm -hmm. And what is the limit? Or is that going to be overlapped or not? So there are a lot of consequences. How to make sure that people have the time to, to not to be back to back uh, from one meeting to another one. This is what happens everywhere. Everybody I'm talking to, you, everybody here, there, everywhere in the world, we have been working more than ever. And you and me and many other people, we didn't have the impression that we were not working enough. We had the impression that we were already yeah. overwhelmed. But, but by what we were doing. But we had time to do something else. At yeah. least moving from one place to another place, just, you know, the, uh, the commute time was a good way to think about something else, yeah. even if, if we were over the phone. So we have lost all these connections. I don't see my grandchildren and my children for a while. Yeah. I'm just to my mother, but my mother does, do, do not, does not see them either. So there is no... Um, there is no social connection. And I think that this is something we definitely need to think it through. And I don't believe that tomorrow, everybody is going to work from home. I think, but the, the way of working is going to change. The quality of our, uh, uh, of our apartments, of our family places is going to change. The quality of equipment, the way we are going to consider the, the working from home is going to change. So there is a lot of, and the, 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 uh, the health, consequences yeah. of that how we are going to make sure that people at home are not connected with somebody who is uh, at least um, you know um, contaminated with the covid or any other you know pandemic and you know one of the things that we were just talking about this just earlier i think for for fifth wall i i was actually shocked by how seamless um, it was to make this transition to working remotely and, and largely conducting our business yep. over yep. Zoom. Um, but th at the same time, the, the, the productivity was, was shocking to me. I was like, I actually, in some ways, feel like we're more productive, but I also yep. feel like it's unsustainable, meaning we're working at a pace, a, a kind of frenetic, unrelenting, almost chaotic pace that I think is possible when you're, when you're in one place. And so... I'm curious how you think, Mecca, less about Jacina, but more about the occupiers of, of, uh, of real estate. So do you think CEOs come out of this? And I think the obvious conclusion you're hearing about in the press is that CEOs all across the world are realizing it's easier than ever before to work remotely. But I actually think that's not totally a complete conclusion because for me, I'll just say how, how I think about it the absence of some demarcation between my home life and my work life, as you were saying, the commute, just the time of day, the different lighting, the different context, the different ambiance of my home versus my office creates a psychological shift that I actually think leads to healthier, more productive employees over the long term. So if you're a CEO, how do you think they'll balance that? And what do you think that means for real estate owners going forward? Uh I think that that's absolutely true and a, a, a very good point. And this is something we are working on because if we are considering to come out of the, the lockdown, then we have to consider how not only for our teams and for our colleagues, but for all, all our office building to reopen and how we are going to reopen and how long it will take and what are the pace, you know, to get there. I think that, um, uh, yes, everybody considered there is a lot of productivity, but people are tired. We are facing uh, a lot of stress. And at some point, um, my, my personal thinking, I absolutely, and I'm, I'm glad to see that something much younger than me feels the same because you need to have, at some point, you need to have a sort of, you know, um, 
breakdown between what you're doing the whole day and then you come home and you relax. Yeah. Even if you have invited your best clients at home, it shouldn't be exactly the same ambiance, the same way of working, the same, the same feeling. You need to have other kind of conversation. You need to talk about, you need from time to time to go and see an opera, go to the theater, go to see a movie, go to just, you know, just to, to, to stay in a park. I mean, you are, I see that you are uh, at, at your place in, in the mountain and you are not skiing just to have a very hot chocolate in a cafe when you are in mountains. This is a pleasure. It, this is the, uh, for me, it becomes something that I'm, I'm dreaming of. I'm not just you yeah. know, a pizza, you know, to go to the, your, your, your favorite pizza, you know, restaurant and just to sit down and have a pizza. I thinking that it, that it was literally, it was, uh, it was five months ago that we were recording that video. No, no, it, yeah. was, it was three months ago that we were recording yeah, that three video. Months ago. Um, That's right. on top of Jelena on Abbot Kinney with yeah. people everywhere. I mean, there were so many people outside. Remember, we had to keep asking them to stop making noise. And yeah. that, that feels like a year ago to me. Like that, that, that feels so foreign to where we are right now. So far. And, 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 and at, on the other side, I think that at some point, we need to go back to this high quality of going back to the community, to the yeah. best part of the community, but on the other side, I think also at the same time, and probably you have observed that in your environment, uh, the sky is beautifully blue in Paris. We haven't seen such a beautiful blue sky for years, for years, decades actually. The, uh, you see a lot of birds everywhere, mm -hmm. a lot of birds. And by the way, they are so noisy, you can't imagine how much noise they make. Uh, and uh, I'm just kidding. And and you see them. You see the dogs in the streets of Paris. There's yeah. no car, so they are you know using the space. The space is empty, so they are using it. So we definitely need to when we are coming out of this uh, this uh, lockdown period, we definitely need to continue even accelerate our actions for climate, our actions against carbon uh, emission, our actions to ameliorate and to improve the quality of life of, or, you know, of, our, of our people, of our um, neighbors, to keep, you know, every day at 8 p.m., we cheers and applause for um, you know, nurses and doctors and everybody who are taking care of people today. And we go to our balcony, our terrace, and we applause for more than 10 minutes. And the, and is, that, is, that, is that throughout France that's happening? It, it happens everywhere in France. Wow. Every day at 8 p.m. Wow. And so all by the sudden, I must admit, so far I didn't pay attention to my neighbors that much. I mean, I know a few of them, but not everybody. But now you are, you have a connection with people at the other side of the street. Yeah. At the other level in the same building. And, uh, and, and so there's a young man in our street, which every day he has the, the French, you know, the, 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 he put the French anthems first. So we, we chant, you know, the French anthem. And then all kind of music. I will survive, or whatever. I mean, all kind of music. Right. Uh, and, and and we are we are cheering together. We are we have we are in connection. We ask people if they are feeling good. We are proposing to go and to help them. You know, if they have you know uh, something to buy from outside. I, I don't know. They want to go to the market, whatever, to help them. This connection we shouldn't lose it. We shouldn't go back and to be uh, to have to be completely to 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 go back to, to the fact that we are not paying attention to our environment and, and continue to keep the good side of it. And, um, and, but at the same time to go back to real life because human beings need to be connected. I mean, I don't believe that everybody is going to go and live alone in the, uh, in the woods. I don't believe so. I don't believe that ultimately we'll end up like this. And so you touched on one of the, in my mind, there's kind of three, three really interesting conclusions that kind of come out of this. Um, one, is, one is, which you just talked about, the almost the reappreciation 
the revaluation of community. And, and, and I mean that in an urban context of streetscape, right? Of, of street life and people paying attention to their neighbors and people being yeah. cognizant of the world around them and not just thinking about their lives as these point solutions. And that flows into, I think, one of the, the other points, which is you kind of also touched on, which is the interconnectedness of everything, mm -hmm. right? And in some ways, what this crisis demonstrates, I think, to political leaders, to CEOs, to real estate owners, is that this notion that um, we can solve problems individually, uh, that we are not constantly, the most important problems are not collective action problems. In some ways, this crisis should underscore that. Like when we, you and I have talked a lot about the imperative for real estate owners to decarbonize and to mm -hmm. accept mm -hmm. their responsibility in fighting the climate crisis. And that is fundamentally a collective action problem. Meaning, you know, all the, Jacina can do a lot, but if all the owners in France don't do the same thing, and if all the owners in China and the United States don't do the same thing, it doesn't work. And we need to have these collective action solutions. Do you think from, as, as an organization and a person that's been at the vanguard of, you know, how important the climate crisis is to the real estate industry, do you think that we come out of this with a greater appreciation of what we should be doing to decarbonize real estate? I hope so. Uh Again, this is exactly the goal um, I assigned to my, to my people, to the team, uh, under the custody of our board of directors, and we have the support of our board, but I hope so. And, and I do not believe that people would accept to go back to pollution, to what they were living before. And we, we definitely, you, me, all the people who are doing this on a very positive way, all over the world, all over the world, because this is the... the, the the earth is not but one country. Mm -hmm. All over the world, we definitely need to do it together and consider that there is a global community. Whether we are supported by our governance or not, we need to push hard to make it happen. Because this is not just about, this is for the future. When we, you see, I mean, uh, the, the US government has voted at the federal level. I'm not talking about you know the state level that the federal level, two trillion of dollars of extra budget for this uh, disease and mm -hmm. to support and to help and to support the economy because the economy is hurt everywhere in the world. The French government has done a lot. Every single government all over the world has done a lot. And at European level, we have also a lot of actions taken. But at the same time, the same way, we have to take action when we are coming out of this to invest all these amount of money to consider that these are investment for the future to improve the quality of life and our commitment uh, to decarbonize the economy, to decarbonize the world and to improve the quality of life. We can at the same time that we have to provide, we have, we must provide a decent way of life for everybody in our organization. This is about, we cannot go and cheer the nurses, doctors, whoever, I mean, um, the firemen, whatever, who are working for us, or, or even, you know, uh, the garbage, you know, collector every day, because they are working every day, and they are doing whatever they have to do. And tomorrow, go back and consider that they are not, they have, they, they shouldn't be considered. We need to consider that this earth is not but one country, and we need to consider that. And we do not have a planet B. I think I told you exactly the same thing three months ago, mm -hmm. and I believe today is even more important. And we have to continue to put all our task force, all our capacity, all our commitments on that. And this is not against the economy. This is going to be the new model we have to reinvent. I think that's exactly right. And I think that there is this unique moment in time where the governments all across the world are reshuffling the deck around what they want a either production or consumption economy to look like. And I think the hope, yeah. the, as, the aspirational hope, right, is that this, this moment of crisis creates an opportunity to reprioritize. Um, and so it, it'll be really interesting to see the role that real estate plays in that. Um, I wanted to ask you one more thing. It's just something I've been thinking about, which I, I actually think has, is both a it's a, it's a social 
and kind of a, a societal phenomenon that has real estate implications. I don't know whether you've ever considered this, but this crisis has yeah. absolutely made me think about it, which is one of the things that made me think about is we just talked about how not having this demarcation between my home life and my work life is obviously suboptimal. But at the same time, um, I feel, and it sounds like you feel as well, like there is this productivity in a remote work environment. And so one of the things I was thinking about is the paradigm, the architecture of the work week itself, meaning um, we have structured our societies and in some ways our bedroom communities and the, 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 the places of commercial offices around this notion of a five-day work week, which typically begins at sunup and ends at sundown. Um, and that is actually in some ways a derivative of the agrarian age, right? That we've carried into the age of the knowledge economy. And we've carried into this age where instead of walking to work or going to work right outside your house, you're actually commuting in some cases an hour. So everyone is commuting at the exact same time. The infrastructure and traffic and pollution consequences of, with, of which are suboptimal. And so do you think that there is, in, in say the, the Western world in particular, almost a re-examination of what the work week looks like. Meaning, does everyone work at the same time? And if they are working at the same time, are some of them working remotely? Are some of them working in the office? Or do you have a week where you go to the office for three days, you work from home for two, and you have two kind of interspersed days of freedom in between, and it's non-contiguous for everyone in the company, meaning you could stagger this throughout the company. I started to think a lot about this because I was like the effects on the economy, on cities, on real estate, on bedroom communities would be profound. And I think most of them would be positive. Uh, very true. Very, very good point. I know that's a very heady up there point. It's and just I, something I've been you thinking are, about. You are always ahead of everybody else. So thank you for, <laughs> for putting that forward. Uh, I, I think that this is a very fair and, and, and very true point. Um, we definitely need to redraw what is our way of life and the way we are working and we are living, etc. Definitely, human beings though needs a sort of you know um, uh, parameters. You know, we, we need to know when it when it is you know down, when it is uh, in the morning, when is the start of the day, when is the end. We need we need to have a kind of you know routines actually for whatever we are doing. But definitely, we can reshape it. And at some point. We kept talking about flexibility for all these years. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can work on flexibility uh, so, uh, uh, so we, can, uh, we can probably, to make it more flexible because we have the technology which, en which yeah. enable us to be flexible, which is true. And we definitely, this is a very good point. We need to think it through. And to make sure that at the same time, uh, and, and probably we will have a better occupancy of all, of all our spaces. At the same time, as we do not need to expand a lot of spaces, we do not need to create new offices, new buildings, new whatever, we, we can have a better use of, of the spaces we, we already have. And probably in metropolitan areas like like Paris, like Los Angeles, like other places in New York, whatever, we definitely need to have a better combination of the two and create a sort of uh, capacity to have a, to, to have a better uh, traffic, you know, organization, better way, and, and not only traffic of uh, cars or whatever, but everybody going to the same place at the same time, exactly. to the same, you know, a the concert, the, to the, the same, you know. Overloaded at the same time, every single day. Et cetera, and have a better capacity, at least, probably this is a way to have a better use of technology. Very yeah. good point. Thank it's, you. It's, it's, it's interesting because, so you know, so much of what we've talked about is this advent of, flexible office and how yeah. real estate owners um, can encourage companies to have that flexibility and have their, their workforce working in multiple places, even within the same building or within the same city. And mm -hmm. it's just interesting to think that in some ways, this is almost a complete affront to the old paradigm of five days a week, you sleep you know, in your bedroom community and you work in your office and you go to and from and then you get two days off. 
And the lines between working and living start to blur. The hours around working start to blur. And the necessity of mobility starts to blur. And as all those things blur, it would be interesting to think if, if real estate owners can collaborate with cities and collaborate with major companies and say, what do we think is optimal? What do we think is optimal for the economy, for the environment, for our urban infrastructure? Because why I think it's, it's so timely is a big part of what's being discussed in the US is a massive infrastructure bill. Um, and the, the hard thing about infrastructure is that you have to build infrastructure with a 50 year time horizon, right? If you build yeah, something absolutely. with a very short term yeah. time horizon, it becomes functionally obsolescent. And so there's this unique moment in time to refashion what we think yeah. our, our cities and our buildings and our society should look like. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, and, and it leads me to another point. Uh, for these last, let's say, 40 years, 30 years, uh, the way we acted is. Uh, we talk locally through our political systems and uh, we uh, uh, think global and we act globally. Yeah. Maybe we should do the, uh, the opposite. Think globally and act locally. I, I think that's exactly right. And that's, by the way, that's something you've been saying for a while, even at the building level. I remember when we were talking yeah. in January, you know, <laughs> you've miniaturized um, like farms, right? I mean, they're, 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 there's fruit and vegetables growing at your assets in urban Paris. Absolutely. But at the same time that you have the big picture and you know what to develop. So I think that this is something we need to work on. And probably in the coming period, again, what I've uh, asked my team and especially Sabine Deno and the uh, GSR and R&D team and innovation do, is to think about how we can improve the quality of our building, the quality of our services, decarbonize even more, accelerate decarbonization. Yeah. Uh, we, we cannot continue like this. Yeah. Otherwise we'll have other kind of, because nobody's talking about, you know, all these fires in Australia anymore, all these, you know, gigantic, you know, um, uh, hurricanes and whatever, but it'll come back. We're, we're yeah. going to see that again. So, uh, and those kind of, you know, viruses are going to invade us. Thank you very much. Very good point. Well, Mecca, thank you so much for for joining. Um, I'm glad. Uh, I'm glad we were able to connect. I think your your screen is frozen. Um, yeah, I think so. Side. But um, you, hopefully, you can still hear me. But thank you so much yeah. for joining. I hope that you and your team and your family all all remain safe. Uh, you want to say same hi for you and and. We'll see Okay. <laughs> can you not see me? Yeah, I see you. I see you. He's I'll, he's I'll, slept. I'll hit, I'll hit Lady Macbeth so you can see her. Lady, say say. Bye bye, bye, lady. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Goodbye. All right. Well, thanks, Becca. I appreciate it. See you soon. Take care. Right. Bye bye. bye.